of action, kind of, you know, reminiscent of what Colin Kaepernick did. I don't know if exactly the same thing or not. I don't know. Uh, and and I, I, I believe that a lot of them wouldn't um, or won't, you know, go there. I wish that wasn't the case. Uh, but maybe this, you know, incite some conversation for them to do something as a whole, um, as a group of players in the NFL to try to affect change, to try to affect di- some type of dialogue and some type of conversation once again. Um, so, I mean, kudos to him, man. I can't say it enough. Can't say it enough. I mean, hats off, man. I mean, like when I heard the story, I was shocked, first of all. And then when I heard the interviews that he did with the reporters, I was like, oh, my gosh. This is exactly what I've been talking about for 15 years on radio, hoping somebody would do. And Colin Kaepernick did it. He was like, damn the money. And now he's got money. He's good. If he doesn't work another day in his life, he's probably going to be good. But that being said, he said, F all my future earnings, if, if that be the case. This is bigger than money. This is bigger than me. Super Bowl award to Colin Kaepernick. All right, back in three minutes. Hey you, it's your girl Spicy, host of Spicy Conversations. Join me and my sexy guest as we discuss relationships, sex, and lots and lots of pleasure. A full two hours of erotic fun that you don't want to miss. Are you ready to add some spice to your life? Hell yeah you are. And I am ready to please you. Spicy Conversations, SME After Dark. Crim de la crim, homie. Top Mike show, check. <laughs> yes, this is your humble host, Marcus Harper. And make sure you check out my show, the Marcus Harper Podcast, on the Stewart Media and Entertainment Network. <laughs> yes, hop aboard this train of thought weekly. 60 minutes of work. I got you. Sports talk, soul beats, and life. <laughs> Again, the Marcus Harper Podcast, weekly on the SME Network. Check me out. Life is good. The Sleeper Pick, the guy only you believe in. In one week fantasy football on DraftKings, he can be the difference. So trust your gut. Trust your numbers. Trust your Uncle Vito if you want. But know this. That sleeper is out there. The question is, who's going to play him? This is DraftKings. Welcome to the big time. To create your account, click on the banner link on the DougStewartShow.com or the Doug Stewart Show app. Welcome back to the Doug Stewart Show, the realest, trillest sports and guy talk show in America. Uh, the number is 404-382-0338. You can also email me at Doug at the Doug Stewart Show.com. I thought, uh, I think you probably heard the commercial that we aired earlier, man. The Doug Stewart Show has a new sponsor, man. MyBookieLV.com. That's right. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. If you make wagers, okay, and I've been there, I know how it is, I know that life, I know that world. If you make wagers online, one of the main issues is getting your money, okay, in, in, in a timely manner. When you win, you want to get your money. You ain't trying to play around and go back and forth with nobody about your money. MyBookieLV.com or MyBookie.LV. Uh, is a website, man, very highly rated, and the big thing about it is they will get you your money as soon as you win, if you win. Um, And here's the big thing about it. Now with this new relationship with the Doug Stewart Show, if you put in up to $1,000, mybookie.lv is going to match it. That's right. That's right. So mybookie.lv, mybookie.lv. Um, and make sure in the, in the section where you put in your code, you put in the code podcast, 
Um, that's my particular code for the Doug Stewart Show. So if you're going to make a wager and you, you know, you're feeling lucky, man, make sure you go to mybookie.lb to cash your, uh, to post your wagers. Uh, you'll get paid quickly. And the big thing is up to $1,000, the Doug Stewart Show and my bookie LV, <laughs> my bookie LV are going to match your money up to $1,000, all right? Yeah. Four zero four three eight two zero three three eight is the number to the show. This is the Doug Stewart Show. Let me read some of your messages. I haven't even had a chance to get into the Tony Romo talk yet, but I'll wait until the top of the of the hour of hour number two to uh, to talk about that. Mm, we hit that real hard Friday, but right now I want to go ahead and read some of your chat in the chat room on Spreaker.com from uh, Jeff Uri Seven. He says Jay Glazer reported that the 49ers will cut Kaepernick because he lost weight and muscle mass and is not the same player he once was. Yeah, um, Colin Kaepernick definitely has struggled, you know, and I think that if he is released by the 49ers, which I don't think that's going to happen, I just think, and I've been saying this for the last, you know, seemingly year, ever since um, Chip Kelly had been uh, announced for the head coaching job there in San Francisco, that it's just a perfect match. Colin Kaepernick's trying to come back from injuries. I think that's the big thing. He hadn't been able to practice. He hadn't been able to work out the way that he normally does. Um, and he's rusty. You know, we'll see if the 49ers decide, you know, to get rid of him or uh, they're going to bet uh, that he can get back to the form in which he once was. Because, listen, there's no denying it. Uh, for Chip Kelly's system, he's an absolute perfect fit. We will see. And then if he is cut, then the question once again is going to be, was it partly in due because uh, – uh, was a partly due because of this stance that he's taken this past weekend. We will see. From uh, Texas Ty, retweet every day. What up, Texas Ty? Thank you for retweeting every day. Um, he said the NFL said it is not required to stand, so that can't cut him directly for that reason, but they can always find another reason. Yeah, of course, if the 49ers were to cut Colin Kaepernick, they're not going to say they're going to cut him or they cut him because – of this political, social stance that he took this past weekend, you would never hear that. You know, it'll be a backroom conversation between the GM, the coach, and the owner and the organization, all of the the, the front office staff. It, it, just like pretty much everything else is done politically in a back room. From Grego, Cap probably just recently found out what blacks are going through. Remember, he wasn't raised by black parents who knows what he was blind to. God, that he is uh, trying to or good that he is trying to have a voice and take a stance. But on the flip side, he needs to add some touch to his passes. Uh, the fastball doesn't work every time, and he's going to have to ball out. Yeah, um, that's an interesting dichotomy to this story. As Colin Kaepernick is half white, raised by white people, um, is well chronicled. And I don't know. I don't know what's happened in his life. Or maybe, you know what, and, and somebody told me that Colin Kaepernick on Twitter has been very socially conscious in, in, uh, in some of his posts on, on, on Twitter and on social media. Uh, people just weren't paying attention. Even this whole stance that he did this past weekend where he didn't stand for the national anthem, he had done that a couple of games. You know, the media just paid attention. The media just caught it, okay? Uh, so very, uh, very interesting stuff right there as well. From um, Finance John E., Chip Kelly would be, Full of ish if he cuts Colin for talking about police brutality. Once again, that won't happen. If they cut him, it won't be, you know, there'll be no documentation that that's the reason they're cutting him. Trust me on that, bro. From Stringer, first things first, I hope a bunch of players do what Cap did during uh, this next week of preseason. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, so, you know, I always keep the TV on Mike and Mike in the morning. And, you know, they interviewed who they interviewed. They interviewed Michael Irvin. Uh, which I'm a fan of Michael Irvin, so I, I won't even respond to to his take on this whole thing. They talked to uh, Bomani Jones. You know Bo- Bomani is thorough as hell. <laughs> you know that. And uh, they were giving their opinions on do they think, as long as well as uh, the two hosts, do they think that Colin Kaepernick is going to spurn a lot of these other players doing the same thing? And it's kind of split down the middle where, you know, some of those guys thought that, no, no, no one's going to do this at all. Uh, it's too much quote unquote risk. Uh, they can't see anybody else doing this. And then uh, one or two of those guys were like, "Yeah, they can see a couple of uh, 
of people jumping on board this protest going forward this year in the NFL. Here's my thing about it, man. When you stand together, <laughs> you know, you're, you're stronger than, than, than separate parts. When you, when you come together, you know, the whole is much stronger than, a, than the single. And that's kind of like some pledging fraternity stuff right there as well. If you do stuff together, man, you know, it's much, much easier. It's much, much better. You accomplish a lot more when you come together. I would love to see some of these, these players, man. I would love to see them all, not some. I would love to see them all just uh, jump on board with this, man. I mean, what? If they all do it, then what it does is it takes away some of the pressure on the few. You understand? If one or two guys sprinkle in and did it, like Colin Kaepernick, then those guys, they're easily done away with. You know, we can get rid of these guys. Once again, they'll never say that out loud, but we can get rid of those guys. But if every single black player in the National Football League were to do this, what are you going to do? Cut everybody? Hell to the no. Hell to the no. Hell to the no. It's kind of like this whole thing with, and you're listening to the Doug Stewart show, it's kind of like this whole thing with, with paying college athletes, whereas these athletes came together at Missouri um, because they had some concerns. They ended up ultimately getting the president fired. You think if it was one of those players to do that, 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 that everything would have went down the way that it did? No. Everybody came together, and whether they agreed fully or disagreed or whatever, they were a team. They came together. They showed mass unity, and it worked. Same thing with this. Uh, if every player in the NFL says we're going to make a stand, you know, once again, this is no disrespect to our military and the people that fight for us, you know, but but we feel like we need to make a stand. It's drastic situations call for drastic measures. It's a drastic situation out there on them streets right now between black men and police in this country. It's as simple as that. And back to that, that the point I made earlier, man, and it's just unbelievable to me, <laughs> you know, and you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show. It's unbelievable to me that just a couple of weeks ago, man, everybody in America to a man, to a woman, was in love. And, oh, my gosh, Muhammad Ali was the greatest this, that, and, 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 and whatever. It's just unbelievable. He's the greatest American since this, that, you know, and the other once again. Uh, but a couple of months later, Colin Kaepernick does something that pales in comparison I played when Muhammad Ali died, if you listen to the Doug Stewart Show, and you have been listening, I played some of Muhammad Ali's clips from the 60s where he went in on racial injustice in this country. Oh, my gosh, what Colin Kaepernick said was was nothing. Was nothing compared to Ali. You know, so, so it's some type of way, and I don't know if the word fits properly, but it's some type of way this, this this whole thing was hypocritical. Whereas a couple of weeks ago, Muhammad Ali was the greatest living American ever to walk the face of the earth. And, and then a couple of weeks later, Colin Kaepernick does something that pales in comparison to what the champ did. And he's the boogeyman himself. How? You tell me how. I tell you what it was. It was fake ass sympathy. That's what it was. It, 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 it's that whole thing where when somebody dies, you know, you don't say anything negative. If you want to say something, unless it's positive, you don't say anything at all. But the response, the pushback that this cat is getting, Colin Kaepernick is getting today, man, it's thick. I mean, it is so thick. You can cut it with a knife to hate and disgust. I've read some of these chat boards, man, on this story, and I've heard everything from the NFL should cut him to he should go back to Africa. That man ain't set foot and damn foot in Africa. He ain't going back to Africa. He live here. Stop that. Yeah, you can go back to Africa. He don't want to go back to Africa. He's fine right here. He can say whatever the hell he want. Go back to Africa. Boy, stop. Back in three minutes. Hour number two of the Doug Stewart Show. Boy, stop. <laughs> 